Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Welcome back, money team. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing the mad cheese as always. Got a full breakdown of the New York Jets offense for you guys today, or at least half of a breakdown. I mean, to be honest with you, there's more in my ebooks. There's more in the full version on my Patreon on my Join Out Community tab. But I want to give you guys at least like an hour's worth of plays. Uh, which is something that I typically try to do at least once a month on this channel. And this month is going to be the New York Jets. I chose the New York Jets because I feel like they're probably one of the most searched uh, as they're one of the most popular in Madden 24. They could be the meta, but uh, the Jets is definitely a good playbook. So if you guys want me to continue this series as always, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button let me know in the comment section. And let me know in the comment section what playbook you would like me to do next month. Let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's go and get right into the video. This is we got the 518 hook. I'm going to go over and pick cover one. Just streak the RB route, and uh, I wish I could block the tight end, but yeah, you can't. So, I mean, the X route can be whatever check down you want, but the B route here, once he gets across the offensive uh, formation, you can see how there's just nobody, you know, he's just going to cross the safety and be a very easy one-play touchdown against cover uh, cover one. Next up, we got the bench pivot. The B route, the RB route, the A route, all these routes are man beaters, and the B route's going to be just about anything other than cover two, the speed out route. I'll take that every single time I see anything other than a cornerback who's five yards off. So this looks like a cover three, cover four. He's going to drop back once again. I'm going to get that outside. So that's probably my favorite route on the play. You can sacrifice one of these routes, like the RB route here, because it looks like a zone coverage. So if I sacrifice that route to pull back that streak and then the tight end is going to get wide open underneath. And that's, that's probably the biggest play. It might be the best play here. It's also a good man beater if you have a pretty fast tight end. Next up, we got the corner out dig. If you put the A route on a streak, you pretty much have every setup you need on this play because the B route is going to get open against any cover three, cover four, or man coverages because it's really just a, an augmented speed out route. You can see it breaks out outside underneath the cornerback dropping back. Basically, that route will get open against anything except cover two. This looks like a man coverage, probably man cover two. Like I said, if I throw it in the break, he's going to catch it on the outside. You basically have to, you know, if you throw it in the break, the cornerback really can't get outside of that. So that route's going to be open against just about everything. But you also have uh, the RB route, which is a very good route. Now, if I want to work the RB route, I can't necessarily run it from the hash mark to the open side of the field, but anywhere else it should work. So all I'm going to do is put the A route on a streak, and now I can throw to the RB route. Unless it's a man coverage, I, mean, I don't really think that's a great man beater, but you can see it. you do have an opportunity. It's kind of 50-50 against man. So this looks like an actual zone coverage. I'm going to go ahead and streak that A route one more time. Like I said, this will help to get the RB route open to the sideline. And that looked like a clear cover two against, well, not cover two. It looked like a cover six. Next up, we got the deep corner. I'm going to start off with random. So this play here, if I want to run this against random defenses, I just put the, the B route on a streak. And your A route and RB route are your zone beaters. Uh, while the RB route is actually probably the best uh, as, a, as a man beater as well. It's a very good man beating route. So you can pretty much take that all game. Your check down the other side to the X route is also a very good play. But like I said, right here, it looks like it covered three once again. You see that streak pulls that guy back. And that just breaks at such a good angle. That it's gonna, like I said, it's really good man beater, really good zone beater. Doesn't matter. Uh, the tight end's really good underneath as well. You don't really have to streak the uh, the the B route. That guy will still pull back coverage pretty well, even in the route that he's doing. And then you can see, like I said, the tight end will get open too. The tight end won't beat man, but uh, the RB route will and the X route will. It's got some one play touchdown capabilities as well. So let's go and let's pick that. And then on the other side, we'll pick cover two. So against cover two. I think it's best to motion this guy out, put the RB route on a fade, and then put the X route on a 10-yard out route. And that's pretty much all you got to do. I'll block the running back just to give me some extra help. And it really should be giving uh, my guard a little bit more help with, uh, with Chris Jones. But you can see how this guy splits the uh, the def splits the safeties very easily for a one-play touchdown. Next up, we'll do the exact same thing, but this time we'll choose cover two man. So let's go and let's pick that. Cover two man on defense. From here, I find it's best to leave the B receiver inside because he has kind of like an inside release at this point. Uh, but you can put the RB route on a streak one more time and then put the, the X route on a 10 yard out one more time and then I'll block my running back. This time though, I'm gonna double team Chris Jones because I really don't feel like dealing with that all day. Uh, then you can see we turn the running back loose and the B, the B route here, like I said, just goes right up the seam there, right between the safeties one more time because he doesn't really get jammed too well being inside like he is. And we'll go to the replay. He just gets inside release from this type formation. That's really all there is to it. Like I said, the guy doesn't really ever get hands on him. He just splits the safeties. Next up, we'll do the same thing, but we'll use cover one man this time. 
Against cover one, I'm gonna put the RB route on a fade. I'd probably put the tight end on a drag, but you can do that with the X route. I mean, if I put the tight end on a, on a streak too, it will also help. Uh, block my running back, and uh, this is pretty much it. I just have to wait until the, um, until the B route crosses which it actually has a pretty big advantage if you go back. I mean, you can see that uh, the jump, you know, the, the streaks really help him to get open if we go back to the replay because of this tight bunch coverage once again. So basically, you know, this receiver here, you can see he never really gets contacted because these streaks basically set a huge pick for him and the cornerback is just catching up the entire way. Next up, we got cover zero. So against cover zero, you can do a couple different things. You can motion this guy across. Go ahead and put my running back on a check and release. And uh, this route here is pretty good. It, it can help, or it can be helped to get open by the X route. As you can see, he comes and knocks him out of the way. But even if he doesn't, that's usually a pretty good play. So it's not something that's totally dependent on it uh, to get open. I'm going to motion to the open side because I probably could have got more out of a catch and run if I had. But uh, it's pretty consistent too, I mean, as far as that um, getting in the way of the depth of the cornerbacks. So that's that's a good thing. Uh, but let's go and let's do this one more time. Like I said, the B route doesn't need that. As you can see there, he did get bumped off again, but he would get open anyways. It's a very good route against man zero. You can also just put the RB route on a fade, put the running back on a check and release, and the B route will have success where he is just as long as you get um, you know some good pass pro and a lot of times that fade route can really help with the coverage as well as you can see probably bumped him off there to help me get so much space let's go and let's go to the replay to see if that's what happened as that's kind of the point of the fade as you can see like i said kind of sets a pick he, can, he tends to get open regardless because he has somewhat of an inside release next up we have cover three against cover three we're just going to motion across Goddard here, put him on a streak, put the X route on a streak, and then put the B route on a streak as well. And then a running back on a streak as well for good measure. And then we're just gonna wait for the outside cornerback here to react to that corner route, which does a very good job of holding him down. Bullet and pass it away, and we have a very good one play touchdown at the seam, although there he had to come back for the ball. So I'm gonna have to do that again. You know, Hertz doesn't have necessarily the best arm, but uh, we're making it happen. So let's go and let's do that one more time. They said this time the safety gets a little more to the center, but it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, it's really more about the cornerback that really sits on that outside route. So we'll go to the replay. The safety has to stay in the middle because you really have streaks on both sides. You could go to either way. I mean, I could throw to the tight end too and have a big play, but obviously the cornerback over here biting so hard on this is what makes the opening. Once he gets over the top of him, it's just a bullet and a pass lead outside to the uh, open space. Next up, we'll choose cover four match. Not a lot to do here. Just put the uh, the RB route on a fade. And for one, I mean, he runs right past, I mean, cover four is really glitchy. He runs right past the safety because the safety, I think he's waiting for the square in route or something. But the B route should get open too. So we'll do that one more time. Like I said, I don't know what's going on with the RB route. He just kind of sits and uh, or the uh, the safety kind of just sits on that so if you're if that's there if you see the safety make that reaction where he really doesn't do anything it's best to just wait for that to develop although i'm sure that's going to be something that ea will patch at some point when it comes to this broken coverage four but yeah if you see if you see your db do that just completely stop and wait to get roasted then you definitely want to throw it there and last but not least we have regular cover four which we'll have to get to the dollar to find next up we get the halfback base it's just uh, one of the better inside run plays in the formation. It's actually something that you could stretch outside if you see available outside space because it doesn't quite force you inside like some inside zones might. Uh, as you can see, like I said, you really have an option. You could run this wide, just take it to the edge every single time, kind of treat it like an outside sweep, or you can run inside like an inside zone because it really has uh, dual capability. Next up, we got the inside cross. This play has a really good double drag concept with the running back underneath being one of the, uh, the drags. Um, so, I mean, the running back, that about route really beats anything. And then you have a drag going the other direction. So, a very good dink and dunk play. I'll go out this time. I don't know. The drag, I don't know why that route. I mean, I do know why. It's because they tried to nerf this formation. But it's weird how that B route takes so long to start. Even if I re-drag him, he still doesn't necessarily shoot out of his hole right away. But either way, it's really all about the double drag concept on this play. Next up, we'll pick cover two. All we'll do is put the RB route on a streak and put the B route on a flat. That's all I really got to do. And that will help to pull that cornerback down to get this tight end over the top. Although I did overthrow him a little bit there as I'm trying a new passing setting. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's still going to work. You can see the uh, the setup here. Go and do that one more time. This is as long as I could get a little bit of a better pass. Lead. You can see the tight end can have a very big play. If it was really fast tight end, it's possible to get a one-play touchdown. 
Next up, we'll pick that play again, only this time we'll pick cover one hole. Again, it's cover one, fade the RB route, and the A route, I can set a pick a lot of times for the A route. If you have a really fast tight end, this would be preferential, but you can see how it can set a pick there. That wasn't even really, um, I didn't really even get around him like I can a lot of times, so I'm gonna do that again. I said fade, you can see here he just gets in his way, and then, you know, by the time I get the, the throw away, he did come back, but luckily um, I got the, the ball out there pretty quick. So, you know, you just have to watch. Like I said, if he sets that pick, you can throw it underneath, or you can wait and throw it over the top, but you're really waiting to watch to see if um, the cornerbacks get jumbled up like they do. I'll go to the replay to show you what that looks like, because this is kind of important. So, like I said, watching the tight end here, he said, boom, he set a pick. I mean, I could throw that at any point in time. You can see, like, all the defenders are really jumbled up. I mean, I probably could have probably threw it to Quez Watkins, too, if I had a streak on the other side. Go ahead and I'll try that. Just got to make sure I motion him around here, put him on a streak, try to pull that safety in that direction, just in case I get something like this, which is exactly what I got. So, you know, that, that setup as I don't know why I didn't catch it, but that setup is very good uh, for a couple different reasons. So I'm going to leave Brown outside because realistically I want him to try to um, stay over there. And then boom, we have a very easy one play touchdown against cover zero on the other side. Next up, we'll also choose cover zero. Same thing, really check and release that running back fade the RB route and the RB route can have similar success, um, although there wasn't nearly as much jumbling around. He just kind of beat him on pure speed there, although Tyler or Sneed is a very fast cornerback. So next up, I got the mesh spot. Start off with cover two. A couple different options. I can put the RB route on a streak and try to work Goddard. I can put the uh, the A route or the X route on a streak and try to, try to work the running back. It's really going to be the same. But you can see that to me, the running back's a better option because it, it goes out a little bit wider. Regardless, you're going to want to make sure whichever play you attack, whatever route you attack, you want to run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field. So if we're going to work the tight end, we got to do it like this. As now, if I'm doing the tight end side too, I also want to put the B route on a flat because I want to pull that guy down as quickly as possible. But now you can see how the tight end can get open right up that stream, that seam too. And the tight end might be more explosive because he's kind of, you know, he's, he's more of a catch and run than the running back is, but still a good play. It's a good option against random too. We're going to pick that. This play is all about the drag routes as they're pretty much going to get open against any man or zone and also this comeback route. If, you're, if the user follows the drags out of the middle of the field, which they probably will, a lot of times they'll leave that RB route or that B route there just wide open as a, like a little bit of a comeback right over the middle of the field. So the drags will beat anything, but this comeback route really does too. And the A route here, I mean, that's a pretty good quick hit. The, the, him and the running back, if you have like an off zone, I like those routes in the flats. Like I said, it has to be an actual zone coverage. This is not a zone coverage, so I had to hold it a little bit long, but I was looking for those. If it's a zone coverage, any zone coverage other than cover two, these, uh, these quick hit routes should be open underneath. Um, just make sure that you don't throw too late because there I took a little too long to decide. I was going back and forth between the uh, the tight end and uh, the running back. And if you wait too long, you're going to throw an interception because once the running back turns up the field, he's he puts the ball into danger. Like I said, if you, if you throw it right away, it's a little different. Then I can throw it underneath and get a nice catch and run. But like I said, make that decision before you even snap the ball. Next up, we'll do cover two man. So all you got to do is put the X route on a streak and the Y route is, I mean, will routes against man coverage are really good. As you can see, it all pull back the safety enough. I mean, honestly, for that running back, you don't even really have to put him on a streak. And if you are going to put him on a streak, I think it's best to motion him in because he's actually out there kind of far. But good, I'll try it again. Like I said, I just want that guy to pull back the streak or pull back the safety. And you see how the running back can get open underneath. So very good play against cover two. Next up, we have the smash return. The uh, the A route and the uh, the RB route here are both really good man beaters. Well, that was a zone because that's like an option route. I don't really like the option version. I really want them stopping. So I typically find it's best to put the RB route back on a uh, or just regular drag so it continues the whole way throughout the play. You can see the tight end over here is a really good route too. That's a unique route that should have success against man or zone. That wasn't even, you know, there wasn't even anything pulling back the safety there. If I want to put like the B route on a streak or something to pull back the safety, that'll help Goddard get out open against a lot of different coverages. As you can see, he's getting open underneath a lot of different things. So pretty much any zone, especially if you streak and it's a very good man beater as long as he's not being covered by like a defensive back or something. I don't, I don't really think he's going to have success there. But you can see right there, I mean, I body that right in front of, I think it was looked like a cover two defender. So, you know, it's definitely um, a very consistent route. It's very, a very good route. But other than that, you pretty much just have every other route, which is a man beating concept. Next up, we got the corner strike. No big random. 
It's another play. If I motion across this tight end here, he basically, you know, converts to a drag. And that'll give me good double drag concepts to uh, the running back and the tight end. And one of them will get open just about every single time. So you really just have to, you know, wait to see which one develops better. If you streak or fade the RB route, you got a pretty good high-low concept between the tight end and the B route as well, as one of them should pretty much get open every single time. And if you run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field, they should really both get open. But I'm running this to the open side, so let's go ahead and let's motion it over a little bit. Go ahead, we'll put that RB route on a streak one more time. Like I said, even if it's a man coverage, which is what this looks like to be, this B route is a very good man-beating route. So keep that in mind. If you, if you run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field, that guy should really get open against anything, man or zone, although cover two probably has the best chance of covering it, which is what that looked like it probably was, because that's something, it's not deep enough to take advantage of cover two. This looks like a man coverage. They said that B route will get open once again. Even the tight end looks like it's being man coverage, which typically a flat route tight end does not do. So this is very a very glitchy play. Like I said, here we go once again. I like that how that tight end kind of curves that route because it gives him like a little bit of an acceleration boost compared to like a normal flat route where he really doesn't do that this looks like a man cover zero so like i said i can get that that route out pretty quick although there you know if you're running the, if you want to use that as a man beater you probably want to run that from a hash mark to the open side of the field where if you're trying to run it as a zone beater it, it makes sense to throw it to the short side because from the open side or the short side you don't have a lot of time to um to stretch that route out like if it's a man coverage normally the longer the route's being run the better opportunity you have to run away from the coverage so that's the one thing you got to be aware of but overall these are very good uh, routes as you can see right here one now it says cover three it doesn't work in zone anymore because i'm running to the ash to the open side of the field so keep that in mind but that's a very good play it does have some one play touchdown capability so we're going to pick that again we'll pick uh, cover zero like I said, it's a very good man beating route. I'll put the RB route on a fade or a streak once again. It really doesn't matter. And you can see how this route's just going to get open outside for a big catch and run every single time. Although there, I tiptoed to the sideline a little bit. I mean, you don't have to streak that RB route either. You can leave him doing what he's doing. But the bottom line is, like, there, there's just, you know, they're just all all in the way of one another and it's just it's just like stealing against cover zero it's instantly open very big play catch run every time and it's really going to have that effect against cover one man as well so we're going to pick that cover one man like i said not to really do anything once again getting outside of that and just i mean you could make that streak one more time to pull that safety back this play also has success against cover three so it's going to pick cover through sky so it runs from a hash mark to the open side of the field Put the RB route a fade and then put the other two receivers on a streak. And once again, once this um, once this cornerback reacts to that uh, that corner route, once it spreads them apart a little bit, just bullet and pass it away from the safety. So I'll do that again because I didn't mention um, motion across the tight end, even though I did motion across the tight end. So I think that should be obvious, but I'm just gonna do it one time, letting you guys know. And like I said, you get a really easy seam here to um, you know to get a one play touchdown. Next up, we got the RPO alert screen. The B route here is really good cover three off zone play. Uh, as you can see right there, it just kind of floats outside of whatever zone coverage that was. It's good against uh, it's good against zones that drop back like cover three and cover four. This one here looks like it might be the same way. See that guy just drops back. And you can just flip it out real quick for an easy catch and run. Next up, we have the slant spacing. Go and pick random. The B route... It's going to get open against just about any man or zone except cover two. The slant's a decent secondary option, but I really, if I'm calling this, it's because this play here is just really, it's a short yards play. There's no real uh, risk of, of it getting stopped because it's just, it's it's a guarantee. Although there, he kind of broke into that like kind of late. So um, for the most part, it's not something that's going to get defended. I would say this would be about as safe of a fourth and short play as you could call. Next up, we got the inside zone. This here, if it's a six-man box or less, I mean, you want to you wanna run it. Uh, against cover two, man or zone, it's going to be best because the safety drop back. I didn't really run that too great, but it's a good run. Like right here, you can see it's a man coverage, so the linebacker is pulled out to man cover one of their receivers, which is going to be the best opportunity for that. But like I said, you can run this at any point in time uh, that you have a six-on-six six block, and you should get some yards. Although that, you know, pin and pull block with that double team isn't really getting down the field too well. But against man coverage especially, you can see the holes right there. Next up, we have the Mesh. It's another play that has a good double drags concept to it, as I can really just, you know, read the two drags. They'll beat man or zone. There's really nothing stopping that. Um, that's probably the uh, the easiest way to run this play. But let's motion this over here. 
And we'll try to work the zone, although I actually motioned over too far. So it's actually motion more towards the center. You could also put the B route on a drag. So you can still keep that double drags and then put the Y route on a streak. And that will help to pull back any zone coverages in the area. So this X route can get open, although there he did a pretty good job. It's probably best to run from a hash mark to the short side of the field, if I'm being honest, because that's the glitch, in, or at least the way that it worked last year. And I'm noticing it's a little bit more important this year too. So once again, hash mark to the short side of the field, give myself that drag back. Here it looks like we have a, a zone coverage, although the pressure was coming in. I don't know where that blitz came from. Dude looked like he started on my side of the line of scrimmage. So let's go let's do this one more time. Like I said, we have everything we need. If we have a short, if we have a blitz on this side, I might as well bring this guy around to block on that side, although I really don't know if that's the case. Like I said, we got the zone coverage getting pulled back. Finally get that look on tape, as that's really all I was hoping to get. Next up, we got the PA boot over. I'm going to start off with Tampa 2. If you want to do a full setup, I would say putting the B route on a slant and putting the... Um, the Y route on a fade would be best uh, because that will help to, to pull the field even further. As you can see, I mean, there's a ton of space here uh, right between the middle. I mean, I could, you know, if full setup, I would probably, I could go as far as motioning across this receiver, although he's a really good check down, or put, uh, put Goddard here on a 10-yard uh, out route. And if I really want to, like I said, I can motion him out to pull the... Um, to pull those safeties apart this would probably be like the full setup cancel this play action since i forgot to do a pre-snap but yeah i mean there's a lot of opportunity here as i as i throw a bad ball um but yeah that'd be the full setup i would say a route on a 10 yard out route uh y route on a fade for cover two we'll do the full setup a little bit more take it a little bit more seriously because cover two man is a little bit tougher so doing this one more time like i said this is why you wouldn't want to motion across that um that that b route because it's a really good check down here uh, would be that uh, that B route. It's basically like an augmented drag, but same thing. X route gonna get open big time. You know what I mean, overthrew it by a mile, <laughs> but poor accuracy. What else is new? Men 24, but um, but yeah, I mean that's that's your that's your best play. I'm gonna do this one more time. Block this running back. It's another play where the Y route really might be an option, by the way, which is like you know kind of weird but it does happen so here we go one more time get that cover two wasn't even the best throw it was under pressure poor accuracy still got it for the TD go ahead and pick that one more time we're going to do well more than one more time we're going to do cover one I would say motioning the running back across and putting him on a streak to pull back the safety would make the most sense because you really have a lot of options here with these receivers I wouldn't want to necessarily get rid of any of them because you can see that two of these routes are really capable of a one play touchdown but I'll do that one more time Double that end, you know what I mean? Just so I can basically um, roll in that direction. And then, like I said, you can get this route. I don't know if I'm gonna get it. You can see he was passed. I'm not gonna keep doing this. <laughs> but you can see they get passed. So both routes really can score. Go ahead and we'll do that again. And we'll pick cover zero this time. Um, can do anything here. You really can do, um, you know, all these routes are gonna get open. As you see the Y route here is gonna be a big play once again. So it's like, I really have my choice. I don't necessarily have to do uh, you know, anything with this play against man coverage. And it'll be successful. So I was going to do that one more time. So the Y route here feels like a play. As he just seems to just kind of run right around that. We still got that. So you have a lot of options against man zero. Next up, we have cover four quarters. We're going to pick up for match. Just put the wire out on a streak or even a fade, to be honest with you. The, the streak might be better because you can see how the fade, a lot of times he like runs in stuff. If you put him on a fade, I think the X route gets open more often, but uh, it really doesn't matter as this, um, you know, you can really use either one. I mean, this Y route here just runs right past there. He actually got picked up. So this time it would have been the X route, although I get a bad throw because I had, you know, pressure on my face. So really both of those routes can score. Next up, we'll pick cover for regular. So slant uh, the B route, put the Y route on a streak or a fade. Really doesn't matter. Block the running back though, because I don't want him pulling me all over the place. And the X route here is going to get over the top of that safety. It's going to split them safeties real easy for one play touchdown. Not sure if it matters which hash mark you're running from, but I run from the hash mark to the open side of the field. Last but not least, you can run this play against random plays and it's very successful. So let's go random on defense. We're just going to streak the A route here to pull back coverages. And you really have a lot of good uh, man in zone beaters. I mean, I don't even know what that coverage was, but you can see this guy's wide open for a one-play touchdown against the first play. I would say you could also, I don't really find the post routes great, but you can motion across the, the, the X route or the, um, the running back and give yourself an outlet pass to the other side 
which is like an option, but you know, it's really up to you as we get probably another one play touchdown on the next play as we got cover one. But I showed that earlier. That's a really good play. So lots of really good plays here. You could also run double drags. You could you could just put the tight end on a drag and then run that uh, as an outlet pass going the other way. Although there, the pressure got in pretty quick, but double drags is a good concept. So lots of good options. Next up out of the bunch TE, we have the RPO alert bubble. The bubble screen is going to be best against off zones like cover three, cover four, where the cornerbacks drop back. You just basically get a catch and run, but that actually looked like it was kind of a man coverage. Um, and I threw it to it anyway. Uh, the running back's good like, if you have big holes outside like we do here. That was a double cornerback blitz. So that's going to be perfect for a, a look like this. As you can see, there's nobody out here to defend the screen pass now. But uh, it's a good play. I mean, you have some good options. Um, if it's a cover two, you might want to hand it off to the running back. Or like I said, if you have huge holes like this, well, I don't know why that dude just ripped that ball out. Bad ball security, but a good play. Next up, we got the triple out, Tampa 2. Just put the Y route on a street. That's all you really got to do, but I think it's better to put the, the X route here on a fade. I also think it's best to shorten that route, the smart route, so it comes down a little bit. And you can probably put the uh, the A route there on a, um, as I almost overthrow that, you can probably put the A route on a street too to pull the other safety back so that this uh, he doesn't necessarily have help. So that would be the full setup. Would look something like this like i said smart routing that b route at 10 yards uh just will get him open quicker here you can see he's breaking about the 35 where here you can see he's breaking just a couple yards shy it's still going to help every little bit helps and then the y route can probably be open too but you can see how that streak really pulls his attention and it just gets this open for a much easier play also has success against cover two man let's go let's pick that You see, it's pretty much the exact same setup. I mean, I just I just streak the wire out. I don't have to worry about the other guy. Um, is all you really got to do. I mean, a full setup once again. Put the A route on a streak or even a drag, just to give yourself a check down, and then give yourself a check down with a zig instead of the flat or the out route because it doesn't really affect. I mean, there's no zones here. There's a little bit of jostling going around, so you can see he's still got open outside. I actually saw a unique um, mistake there once again by the computer as the cornerbacks got jumbled up, which you'll get quite a lot. I mean, that's really what the point of this is, but you can see how these two guys are getting jumbled up so much that, um, you know, they're just basically setting that pick on each other, even though I got sacked because I didn't think that the receiver would get off of that. But I'll do that one more time. Just for posterity, I keep forgetting to put the uh, this guy on a smart route, as I really do think that would help. But you can see it's a one-play touchdown against both. Do you cover zero? Against cover zero, just put the B route on a smart route and streak that Y route one more time. And you can see how he just kind of, you know, runs away from the dude, even though I had a great timing out of reach, perfect pass, which makes no sense in that order. Um, as once again, I mean, he just has outside leverage and he doesn't really, um, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> just getting horrible throws. I'm going to do it one more time though. You can see he's beating the coverage and I keep forgetting to shorten the route, but it is what it is because he's still having success anyway as we finally catch it we finally complete it but it's very easy one put touchdown against cover zero also it's a good play against cover four so we'll pick cover four quarters right here so same thing just put the wire around the street that's all you gotta do only that it's this time there's a huge coverage issue as um you know i guess that corner that that cornerback doesn't didn't know that that was going to be his job you can see he starts to play kind of low. I'm not going to go to replay, just do it again. But you can see he starts to play kind of low like he wants to go for the X route. If I put the X route on a streak, it'll probably change that or make it even easier. As you can see now, that that receiver, I mean, it totally changes the coverages as, as, as the cornerback on the other side of the field becomes responsible for him. So if you really want to glitch this out, just smart route the, the X route. As you can see this dude, he starts like it's his job, but then it's just like by the time it plays over, it's like nobody knows whose job it is, and the guy's just running down the field naked. Next up, we'll do regular cover four. So against cover four, just run from a hash to the open side of the field, streak the Y route, motion out the X route, put him on a comeback, and then smart route it at 10 yards. Uh, and the B route here is going to be super gone over the cornerback because he bites on the comeback route as I overthrow the ball. But you can see how that works out. Let's go let's do that again. My pass leading is a little bit off here. Let's see if I can do a little bit of a better job. As I'm trying to lead it because I know how this game is. You have to lead outside of that bubble a little bit. But we get a very easy one-play touchdown. One of the easiest one-play touchdowns against cover four in the game. Cover this guy. So against cover three, run from a hash mark to the open side of the field. Motion this guy across. Put the A route on the streak and the running back on a wheel route. 
And even though this is a not a matching principal play, cover three has a tendency to kind of turn into match, which uh, can be a huge benefit to the running back. As you can see, we track that ball there. Might actually be better to run it, with, since I'm throwing it to the running back, it might be better to, to do it a little bit differently and motion this across. Do this again. And uh, let's see how they react to the running back now, where basically I'm hoping that we get a little bit of a you know coverage match issue here. And there it is, wide open on the other side for an easy one play touchdown as all the deep coverages are taken up. So I'll do that one more time. Streak the A route, motion across, put the RB route on a wheel. And let's, uh, I guess it's by a little time. I want to run out of the pocket here. As you can see, I mean, that's just as easy as it gets. 50 yard bomb and probably could get it from further. Next up we have the X spot. It's going to start off with cover two. I'm just going to put the X route on a streak and the A route on a streak. And the Y route is going to get open outside the safety and above the cornerback. If you get a good catch and run, you can be gone. I mean, he kind of slowed down there. Maybe I didn't pass lead that out enough. So let's do that again. So I can try to get a little bit of better timing. Because you can see that streak pulls that guy up. And then you have an opportunity for catch and run one play touchdown. Next up, we'll pick that. Only this time we'll do cover three. Runs from a hash to the open side of the field. Motion this guy across and put him, the A route, and the X route all on streaks. And then the running back, for good measure, put him on a streak as well because I want to pull that safety over as much as I can. And then you're just waiting for that cornerback to react to that corner route. And you can see the safety there. He even was reacting. I mean, he's, he started by going over there, but because of all the streaks on the other side, he had to hesitate, which is what gets you that lane. So let's go and let's watch the replay. I might have threw it a little bit early because you kind of want to wait for the safety to react to the right side you can see he just shoots right over to the left and then because of the other because you see how he kind of turns his attention to these streaks that's pretty much what draws him back and at that point i'm throwing the ball i go and i'll pick this play against random as well because if you run this from a hash to you know the shorter side not necessarily the short side 100 percent all the way but if you if you run to the short side of the field you will have an opportunity for this Y route to get open against just about any zone coverage. As you can see right there, that streak pulls back. Uh, they look like a cover four, a cover four match. Cover three should work, but you should also have some success against man coverage as well. Here we have that cover two. I said that any zone coverage, that streak's gonna pull back the deep zone and get him open. I wanna get a man coverage too though, because this is somewhat decent against man as we get another zone coverage. Um, with man, it's going to be like 50-50. You know I mean, it can't get open. It is a somewhat of a man-beating route. I don't know if I'm going to get a man coverage at any point in time. As we get another cover two. Getting over the top. But yeah, like I said, if I can get a man coverage here. Next up, we got the Y curl. We'll go ahead and start off with cover two. This play here, man, you can do a couple things uh, against random defenses before I get into the cover two plays. Uh, you can motion this guy in and put him on a drag, and you'll have a mesh double drags concept, uh, which can be successful against just about any defense. At some point, these drags are going to get open and crossing each other. But against cover two, I think it's best to motion out uh, this receiver here, and that's pretty much all you got to do as the RB or the um, the Y route rather, the running back, is going to get open uh, over the top of the cornerback. Um, and you don't really even have to motion him out. I mean, he runs a pretty wide route to the point where you can probably get away with not even motioning him out and still having that success. But you can see it takes longer because if you motion him out, he's at the line of scrimmage. And I don't want to have to wait because the pressure gets him pretty hot. So that's one of your better options. You could also do it on the other side with the tight end. But of course, I'm going to want to run that from a hash mark to the open side of the field so I can get a good pass lead. You can also run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field on the bunch side. Put the A route on the street, put the B route on the flat, and the RB route can be a very good um, a good option outside here. As you can see, I mean, I, I didn't get a very good, I got a poor accuracy pass, but it's per, it was a perfect placement. That's exactly where I wanted it. Next up, we'll do that again with cover two man this time. Against cover two man, I think the uh, better side's probably gonna be this side. You can motion him out the same way, or you can just leave him in, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but you can see how if you motion him out, he just runs right around and gets a very big play. So that's a very good man beating play. Next up, we got cover one. Wheel rods are pretty good against cover one. You can motion them to the line once again. You can see that does let the uh, defender get in position a little bit, but I find it helps him to turn that corner back and uh, make a big play down the field. As you can see, we caught that in you know tight coverage, but it's still a good option. You, see, you don't even have to really, you know, you can just leave him in the backfield if you feel more comfortable doing it that way. Like I said, it's not always gonna be, I mean, Willie Gay's a pretty fast linebacker, but you can see I'm getting, you know, I'm getting separation. Next up, out of the empty chip tight, we have the 
post cross. It's going to start off with cover two. So I'll just put this uh, Y route on a streak, put the, the B route on a 10 yard out route. And the X route here should get open right between the middle of those two bad boys. Next up, we got cover two. So again, it's cover two. Put the B route on a 10 yard out route, fade the Y route one more time, and the X route. It's going to be a very easy play, just as long as I get a good throw, as we do for an easy one play touchdown split in safeties. So I'll pick that again. I'm going to do cover one. Against cover one, you got a couple different options here because the RB route is a very big uh, play. As you can see, I mean, he can get across for an easy catch and run possible one play touchdown. And especially if I try to pull that safety back by streaking the in route. Putting the uh, B route here on a streak would be a good option to try to pull that guy away enough um, that, I can, that I could try to get a good catch and run here. But you can see, I mean, that's a very capable play. It's not necessarily one play touchdown, but it's a very big one. Next up, we'll choose cover one. So for this to work, we got to get ourselves another blocker. So we're going to motion snap this dude, snap the ball once he's behind the tackle. And this post route here, once he breaks inside, is a very easy one-play touchdown against cover zero. Next up, we got cover four, cover four quarters. Fade that Y route. That's pretty much all you got to do. And the X route is going to be the uh, the big play once again. Is you know that just He was just trailing the entire way. It's an inside release thing. You can motion him in too, but you really don't have to. Next up, we got the flood. Let's go and let's pick cover three. So I'm going to run some hash mark to the open side of the field. Most his receiver out, put him on a streak, put the A route on a streak, and then I'll just block the running back. And the X route here should get open up the seam just as long as you wait for the cornerback to uh, bite on the corner route. That's a very easy one play touchdown up the cover three seam. Next up, we got the quick base. Very good run play. You can motion across the tight end to create kind of a you know, a bunch look to give you even more blocking where you motion across the receiver. It really doesn't matter, but uh, it's a good run play. It can be treated like an inside zone or an outside zone. It doesn't really force you in either direction. I find if it's a zone coverage, it's good to motion this guy across, but if it's a man coverage, you don't want to do that because a lot of times they'll bring defenders with them. And you can see how he really doesn't get into the bunch. I mean, the tight end of the bunch is probably a little bit better. And then you can see how you get lanes inside or outside. It's a very effective run, very flexible. Next up, we have the gun tight doubles. We've got the mesh spot. Just a good play, man or zone. These drags will get open against just about anything. And if the user follows, typically the B route will get open over the center. Well, that was a man coverage and he just didn't hang on to it. But that's pretty much it for the play. There really isn't a lot more else to this other than the drags. A lot of people like to throw the running back underneath. I'm not a huge fan of that. If it's a zone coverage, though, you can put the X route on a streak. And a lot of times he'll pull back any coverage in the area for the Y route. Although I don't know what type of zone coverage that was. Typically, you want to run, if you're going to do that, you want to run from a hash mark to the short side of the field as well. So it's going to let's motion this over. Next up, we have the Z spot. I find putting the Y route on a drag and the B route on a streak will help to get these guys open. You can see here the drag or the streak pulls back the coverage, gets the tight end open. That's going to work against just about any zone coverage. And typically, the running back on the table route is going to get open underneath any zone as well, except for hard flats. You can also put the Y route here on a drag to do a high-low over the middle. If your opponent chases the routes on the right side, it'll leave the middle of the field wide open. Or you can put the Y route on a zig and give yourself a good number of man-beating concepts as well because you don't want every route going over the middle of the field or going to the right side of the field because it'll make it a little bit easier to defend. Next up, we got the bench. You can run this play as is. It's these, uh, these routes here are going to be good against man or zone, these little out routes. And the corner routes are pretty good too, as long as you get a zone coverage that you can uh, run from like a hash mark to the short side of the field, like right here. This looks like, I'm not really sure what this is, but if you streak the wire out, run from a hash mark to the short side of the field, put the A route on a drag for a check down just in case it doesn't work out. A lot of times that corner route can get open against zones, but that didn't look like a zone. It looked like some sort of weird man coverage. Uh, but at the end of the day, it will beat zones. Hopefully I can get a nice vanilla zone covers like this looks like it might be like a cover two or something like that if it is it's going to be even bigger because this is like you know right to the opening of cover two but that should work against cover three cover four as long as the streak pulls back whatever zones in the area this looks like a man coverage as i messed it up entirely because i didn't put the drag <laughs> i didn't put the drag before i hugged the ball but you can see how it doesn't beat man coverage it really only beats zone next up i got the stretch Best run play in the formation, I would say. Um, it's an even formation, so there's no real tell in which way you're going. You just flip with the right stick and go either direction. I would typically go to the open side of the field, but it's a really good play either way. And, um, you know, it's best against cover three, cover four, because the cornerbacks drop back outside, or man coverage, because they'll drop back as well, following fake routes to the receivers. Next up, we have the halfback zone week. 
just a good inside run play, especially if your opponent starts to like spread to take away some of the outside runs. This is going to be a good play, especially against things like cover two man and zone. Next up, we have the jet sweep. This play is going to be best against cover three, cover four, and man coverages. Any defense really where the where the cornerbacks drop back over there, they just let the dude come right off the line, which can happen sometimes. I mean, it's just a, a somewhat of a flaw of the play. But if you have your fastest receiver here, you can usually backtrack and around it. Um, you know, if that happens, you can flip this play too, and there's no real tell as far as like the emotion does or the, uh, the formation doesn't shift or anything like that. And like I said, a lot of times you'll have to get around that defensive end, but when you do, there's nothing but positive yards out here. Next up, we have the PA cross. Go and start off with cover two. Streak the uh, streak the Y route, put the B route on a 10 yard out route, and if you want to motion them out, you can, but you don't have to, as the X route here. It's going to get open right up the seam, although that was an under pressure under throw, and I still almost got the touchdown, so very easy play. You can also motion this guy across and put the B route on a streak, and if you want to, put the A route on a flat, or you can drag the Y tight end, and this route will get open outside of the cover two that way, although it's not necessarily a one-play touchdown, but it's a much, you know, it's a very big play. Next up, we'll choose cover two man, wherever that is. Y route on a streak, B route on a 10 yard out route. You can motion them out again if you want to, but once again, it's not really 100% necessary as this X route here is just gonna split this uh, pretty simple, pretty quick. Okay, motion out the, uh, the B route here, put them on a comeback, run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field, put the running back and the tight end, the Y route on streaks. And that's all you gotta do. Just gotta buy time. And then we have nothing but space over here for an easy one play tutty. One last play, we got a couple quarters. Streak the Y route. That's all you really gotta do. They're gonna forget about the rest as the Y route and the X route were probably open there. Although I threw to the X route out of, you know, habit because it is a good play, but the Y route got forgotten too. So I'll do this one more time. Like I said the Y route, they're both open. I just hope that one of them catches it as we get a, a one play touchdown. The Y route, if you have a fast tight end, the Y route's open too. Let's go, let's do this one more time. Like I said, that Y route, you know, this guy's really going to cover both. So basically, whoever you throw to, I mean, the, the, my, my Y route's a worse receiver, which is why I throw it to A.J. Brown. But if you have a decent tight end out there, I said there, you know. I mean, you guys you don't have to be a good tight end at all. Be wide open and make a catch. Except look at the Y seam. This is really just a fancy double drags concept. Although the X route is a little bit uh, deeper of a run of a route, so it's definitely a more explosive version. But that's really what it's about. It's just the the double drags, the beat manner zone. If your opponent starts to react to that jet sweep, just hit them with the zone fake jet just to slow that uh, overreaction down. They might chase that and then leave you a nice big hole right in the middle to run through here. So it's a good play to use with that. Next up, we got the cross drag. These double drags and crossing routes will really beat any defense. Um, you can streak the A route and really just work the crossing routes as the A route will pull back all the coverages. I mean, this is a, you know, any zone coverage deep, the A route will pull back and then you got your, your crossing routes, which is really good. Or you can do that with the running back. You can motion, or you, I mean, you can just put the running back on a streak and it'll do the same thing, or you can motion them out. Uh, there's really a lot of different options. I really, if I'm going to do this, I really would like to motion them out and put them in the direction of where I'm going because you see how that cover through corner back there kind of got in the way. So, like I said, if I want to keep my dragging tight end, I can motion this guy out and, and put him in the position to pull back those deep zones so that I can have more success with these short routes. As you can see, that the, the Y route's really good. Uh, but it's a very good play, very good goal line play. Our red zone play, I should say. I don't know if it's good for the goal line. You can also motion this guy, put him on a streak, and then put the uh, the tight end, or the running back on a slant, the tight end on a streak to give yourself that back, uh, you know, that, that other angle, as you can see right there. I mean, the, the streaking tight end is still an option if he doesn't get covered off the line. But a very good play with multiple setups. Next up, we got the bingo cross. Start off with cover two. All right, put the B route on a 10-yard out route. Put the Y route on a fade. You can motion out the B route if you want. And this is pretty much going to be the play as I have a, I just didn't bother to set my feet there at all, but you got really good crossing check downs between the A route and the running back, by the way, that'll be just about anything. Put the B route on a 10 yard out route and put the Y route on a fade. You can motion out the B route if you want to, but you really don't have to. As you can see, we're going to split those safeties pretty easily regardless. Um, but that's a very easy one play touchdown there. 
You can motion this guy across too and then put the B-Route on a streak and you'll have success. Um, although I don't find that's as good as the other way. But like I said, you will see that he will get outside of the cover two cornerback, uh, which is another good option if they're you know putting a single high safety in the middle third in the cover two. Go ahead and we'll pick that again. We'll pick cover two man. Put the Y route and fade. That's all you really got to do. The B route actually does a decent job of pulling the safeties apart, even though I find it's best to put them on a 10 yard out route. You can see how it still works out. So if you don't feel like doing that, you don't have to. Next up, we'll choose cover zero. Fade the Y route, check and release the running back. And uh, the X route here, I mean, that that fade or that check and release or fade or whatever definitely set a pick there. But the post route should get open regardless, even if he doesn't do that. If you run from a hash mark to the short side of the field, though, you got a better chance of that pick happening, as you can see here. I mean, he's going to get open. He's, as long as you get a good throw, he's going to get open. And there, I just overthrew him. But it's still going to get open deep. So we got cover four. We'll do cover for match. Fade that Y route one more time. And I could probably throw it either one, but the Y route is going to be wide open as he just gets forgotten again. They said they patched cover four, but it really doesn't seem like it. Next up out of the tight doubles, we got the halfback inside zone. Just the best run play in the formation. You can motion across one of these receivers or the tight end again for a bunch. If it's a man coverage, it's best to motion across the tight end because there's no defender will follow. And if it's a zone coverage, it's best to motion across uh, the receiver because if it's a man coverage a lot of times it'll bring a defender with them well, as you can see right here now we have an extra defender in the area so only do that during zone um, in, re in reality against man coverage it might be best not to do anything at all you could also flip the play and run it to the other direction and you could treat it like a uh, like a stretch run if, if there's nothing up the middle you can always bounce it outside but if you're running it inside, it's going to be best against cover two and cover, um, I'm sorry, cover two man and zone because the safety's drop back. If you take it outside, it's going to be best against cover three, cover four, and man coverage because the cornerbacks drop back. Next up, we got the under. You got a good double drags concept here, but you can also streak the tight end to help, um, you know, pull the, the zones back for these underneath routes because these two crossing routes here are going to be very good against man and zone. So I find it's best just to do that and work the double drags concept with the deeper route over the top, and you'll have a lot of success that way. Um, as you really can do any number of things. That was the blitz that got home, but you can really throw it to any one of these receivers. Just work from the closest to the furthest. Next up, we have the Owen Trap. Good inside run, especially against spread defenses. I mean, we have a dominant defensive tackle here, and this Owen Trap is just, you know, basically putting him in a bad position. Uh, is this something you can flip this with the right stick too and kind of change it up, but I don't find it's necessary. I find it's good to just run it as is. I don't know if there's really a read structure when it comes to flipping the run. Uh, but if they pack the box too much, I mean, you really want to loosely spread uh, defensive front for a play like this. If they pack the box too much or the, the gaps are too tight, it won't work out. Next up, we have the counter Y. It's a good run play to the outside. Um, as you can see, I mean, it's just uh, the majority of these runs, um, you know, they don't take any setup time. This one here kind of is a little bit slow to set up, so you sometimes can get caught from behind, but it's a very good run to throw in every once in a while. Next up, we have the halfback zone weak. Just a good inside run. You can make that same motion. If it's a man coverage, it's best to motion the tight end. If it's a zone coverage, it's best to motion the receiver. And that'll give you another good block advantage for a very good inside run. As this run is best against cover two because the safeties drop back. Except we have the jet sweep. Another good play. Put your fastest receiver here uh, at the at the action spot. Um, if it's a cover three or cover four, you can take it outside. But if it's like a cover two and the cornerback's playing down or they drop down too quick, you might have to cut it off short and take it inside. Here you can see the cornerbacks drop outside. So that's going to make a very easy play, especially if it's like a man coverage. A lot of times that'll be very easy. But any one of those plays where the cornerbacks drop back post snap with the exception of cover two uh, zone will be a very good play to run this. Except we got the shallow cross. Pick random. Again, zone coverage is best to motion this receiver across and put the Y route on a streak. You already have your dragging check down, but this streak or this um, this streak should pull back the coverage and allow the B route to get open underneath it in zones. That was what looked like a cover four. You typically want to run this to a hash mark to the to the short side of the field though to basically make a make that cornerback react to that streak quicker. And I didn't even do that; and it still worked out. So very good play. You can put the A route on a drag too, give yourself a double drag look, and then you basically have um, you know some really good check downs to. 
work with uh, this concept, which this here looked like a cover four cores, which is not going to work exactly the same as your typical zones. But any cover two, cover three, cover four regular that's going to work against that, and everything else you have your double drags. Next up, we have the under Z curl. Pick cover three. So it runs from a hash mark to the other side of the field. Put the B route on a streak, motion around, put the A route on a streak, and then put the X route on a fade as I somehow messed everything up. So let's do that again. And that's our look. So like I said, fade the X route, not streak that one. And you'll see how this cornerback here really reacts heavily to that uh, to that corner route. I didn't get the best throw because I wanted to throw it up a, a little bit. But you can see how he reacts very um, strongly to that and it just basically you know once i get to this point here i mean bullet and pass it outside i got a one play touchdown next up we have the wide zone this play here you can flip it and go to the either side of the field if you want to motion across a receiver or tight you can do that if it's a man coverage it'll pull a defender uh but it still gives you like a bunch look so that's better to do if it's a zone coverage i think if you motion goddard though a lot of times you won't get that look you can see here that just changes the man assignment so now i have a little bit more of a advantage where I can just basically run outside and have a very big play. So you can flip this with the right stick at any point in time. You don't have to make a motion. You can just run it to the right side. But I find that uh, those motions can really give you a big blocking advantage in the direction that you're traveling and make this a very successful run play, especially against cover three, cover four, and man coverage is where the cornerbacks drop back after the snap. If your opponent's chasing that too much, though, you can go to zone fake jet. If your opponent starts to chase this fake motion, then go the other way with the zone fake jet, and you can have a lot of successful runs. The computer's not going to make that mistake, but your opponent might start doing it if you run the jet sweep too much, so it's good to switch it up and hit with your regular inside zone. Next up, we got the drive corner. Got two good checkdowns over the middle, and if you put the RB route on a streak, the, uh, the A route's actually a really good man beater and zone beater. As you can see, he was open there. I was really trying to get that route, but I think I should have blocked the running back because Chris Jones just came through like a monster. So basically, if you do this and you have a decent tight end, the A route should get open against anything. This looks like it's a man coverage here. I can go ahead. I could do that. Like I said, I got a good tight end, so we'll catch it. But it's a good man beating route. It's a good zone beating route. If you run from a hash mark to the short side of the field, especially that route will get open a lot. Here's another man coverage. Like I said, dude's right in his face. But like I said, this is, uh, you know, it's a good man beating route it's a it's a good route against just about anything and then you have your good check downs over the middle uh with your a route and your b route although there i mean i just threw it in the two defenders they were running into each other and for some reason i still decided to throw it to them because i'm just getting tired of chris jones blowing me up all, all practice mode but uh, the drags are really good check down too and the uh the, the in route worked well together over the middle next up we got the halfback stretch it's another play you can run to either side, but I find it's best to flip it and run it behind the receivers. For some reason, receivers block really well typically, especially if it's cover three or cover four. Uh, a lot of times the cornerbacks will start off further. Like right here, we have a, it looks like cover three or cover four where the cornerback on the tight end side is down lower. Or on the other side, he's, they're back further because they have to respect the receiver's speed. So it just gives you that much more space. Also find if it's a man coverage, they'll chase fake routes. As you can see, the receivers out here are on fake routes as they pull back both the man defenders for a very easy run to that side. So I'll switch, or flip the play with the right stick and it's a very good play to the short side receivers. Next up, the wing flex close, we have the halfback zone weak. It's a good inside run. Um, I find that, uh, you know, for whatever reason, these double team blocks don't really move on to the second level. Maybe it just doesn't for the Eagles. Uh, but it's still a good run to the weak side, especially if the if it's like a man coverage or there's a hole here. If there's a linebacker sitting in that, it doesn't seem to work, though. You can always flip with the right stick and run behind the two tight ends set, or you could actually just motion across one of these tight ends into almost like a bunch, but just give you another uh, blocker on this side, which can help. But you can see, like I said, if there's a linebacker sitting in that hole, that, that guard doesn't typically get off to get it. Still a good inside run, though. Next up, we got the jet sweep. It's so another good play against, you know, cover threes or, you know, that was like a cover two where that cornerback was right down in the hole. That's why I had to like, you know, jump inside the second I could. But basically any, you know, play where the cornerbacks drop back post snap, like this guy's not doing, like cover three, cover four, you can take it out wide. But since he's playing down the box and almost looking like, uh, here, here he's playing back. Since the last two plays look like he was in a cover two zone, he played down too quick. And if he comes down like he did there once again, I mean, I can just basically take it up short. But I'm waiting for a look where I can take it outside. This is probably not going to be that look either as he's just down there every single time. But you know what? I'm still getting five, six yards, even though it's not running perfectly. So it's still a very good play. Next up, we have the zone fake jet. If your opponent is reacting too much to the other uh, to the jet sweep, you can always just you know fake that and just run up the middle. If he's chasing uh, the, the jet sweep, 
uh, play action or the motion, then you know a lot of times he'll leave the middle of the field just wide open and you can just hit him with an inside zone. It's not gonna work great against a computer, but against a user that's chasing the, uh, the motion receiver, it will. Next up, we have the four verticals. Let's go ahead, we'll do cover two. The running back is really good against anything, but I'm gonna go in a motion to the other side. You can, you know, do this to either side, the tight end side or the receiver side, but the receivers are gonna be much more effective. And it also is where this side that the running back is on, which will hold down that cornerback. So the very big play to cover two, as long as you motion out that receiver, you can have a one play touchdown opportunity. And like I said, you can do it to the tight end side because the tight end side has the exact same wheel route setup. Go ahead, we'll pick cover three. Against cover three, just motion this guy out and then put the A route and the B route on streaks and fades. Although, um, you know, this is something that uh, you have an opportunity up the seam, but it's it's a bit of a tight throw. Next up, we got the stretch. You can run us to the two tight end side and it'll be very effective, but you can also flip it if your opponent um, is, you know, doing too much, if he's shifting too much to that side. You can always flip with the right stick and run it to the short side, but the computer's not going to make those adjustments, so it really doesn't make sense for me to show it. Next up, we got the angle out. It's another play where this B route's going to be anything other than cover two zones. You can see right there, that would look like a man coverage. He was on it, but if you throw it in the break, he's going to get open outside of it. He'll also get open outside of cover three and four, but this is that cover two zone that I was talking about. Cover two zone, when they're five yards off, they're going to, they're going to be in the perfect position to make a play on that. If they're further off, they won't be. Here's another cover two zone. He's five yards off again, although that actually looked like it might have been a man coverage. I'm not really sure because he did get outside of that. But everything with cover two zone, this particular route will beat. Next up, we get the counter weak. This is a good run play to the other side. There's a uh, good run plays to all directions of the field on this particular play inside and out. So it's good to have one that goes to the weak side just in case your opponent starts to, um, you know, I mean, this is actually, I don't actually think counter run plays are that great, but this is one of the better counter run plays that I've found so far uh, as far as its consistency. And I think it's because it has two pulling blockers, but there Chris Jones just blew it up. So it is what it is, but very good play. Next up, we got the FL drive. Start off with Tampa two. So, motion this across, put him on a streak, put the A route in a 10-yard out route. That's all you really got to do. The X route's going to split them safeties once again, just like uh, he has been pretty much the entire formation, just as long as you get a little, you know, throw time because uh, Chris Jones is, like, right in my face. But still, next up, we'll do cover to man. Same setup, not changed. It's going to be the same result, too. So I'm fading that guy, but uh, the X route doesn't really get pressed. And because of that, he's just going right up the middle one more time. Next up, we got the halfback off tackle. Just another good run play to the outside. It's kind of like a stretch, but not really. You know what I mean? Like you can treat it like a stretch and take it all the way out, but you could also run it inside and kind of treat it like a zone uh, or zone run. It's a very good run either way. Um, you know, like I said, you just have a lot of blockers here. I mean, it's a, it's a good running formation in general. Next up, we got the halfback zone weak. Just a good run play to the weak side. I mean, it's, um, you know, typically that double team block will get off and get to the second level and be a little bit more helpful than it was there. But uh, but that's pretty much the play. It's just a good inside run. You can always flip it and run it to the strong side too. You can flip it with the right stick if you think there's more opportunity over there, but the blocker doesn't always go where you want him to go. If you do that, sometimes it'll go across the formation. They actually worked out pretty good, but uh, there's no guarantees on that as you can see the diagram has him kind of going all over the place but still a good inside run i don't know how i fell over there my dude just tripped over a body but uh definitely better to run to the strong side i find as we're getting much better uh blocking to that side next up we got the mesh post so we got double drags it's pretty much uh it's pretty much the play both uh tight end and the receiver coming across will get open against just about anything if you really want to you can motion this guy across and put the x route on a streak and if it's a zone coverage, which it's not, because you can see how that man defender followed, it'll get open against zone. But like I said, it's not zone, so it's not going to get open. Except we got the PA deep cross. Start off with Tampa 2. So I'll put the X route on a 10-yard out route and streak the A route. That's all you're really going to do. You can motion out the X route if you want, but it's not 100% necessary. As you can see, you still have plenty of space for this play. You can also motion across this receiver here. Put the x route on a streak 
and now you know you can see how this is going to have an opportunity to the outside although the the uh, the x route's not too bad either but uh, this is definitely the play here so you have a couple different options to run this against cover two next up we'll pick cover two man same setup supply not slot not lots really going to change here as we're just going to do the exact same thing and then the b route's just running right past his man coverage for a very easy one play touchdown can also motion them across and do the same setup that way give myself a dragging check down because that's gonna work better against man than the running back but it's the same thing as far as the receiver just running right past his coverage although he didn't catch it but you can see how that's a play although actually you know what we'll pick man coverage man cover one a couple different options when it comes to man coverage I guess I'll do the, uh, the post route first all you gotta do is streak the A route, and really the the two crossing receivers are both good man options. I mean, this one here is probably the most consistent as far as how much it'll get open, but you're gonna wanna run that to the open side of the field so you get a little more catch and run space before the sideline. You could also try the B route here. Um, it will work, but it's you can see it's just not as good. The other route's much better. So in reality, you probably wanna run it to that receiver. Like I said, if you run it to the open side of the field like I was trying to do in the beginning, uh, you'll get much better catch and runs. And you could also motion this guy across and basically, you know, deal do the exact same thing that way. This way, um, I mean, I could have put him on a streak, but you can see I don't even really have to, and he's still getting across. You can see how that one, set, you know, that single high defender's there really to help out. Next up, we'll choose cover zero. You know, I got to do anything here. The B route is in close enough that it can be a one-play touchdown without any adjustments, and the X route's going to be very good as well. Although you can make some adjustments to make this even glitchier. Next up, we'll choose cover three. So, it runs from a hash to the open side of the field. Motion's got to put him on a comeback and then put the fullback on a wheel. And you can also block the running back. You don't really need him doing that. Other than that, this play here should work just fine just as long as you can buy enough time and get a better throw than that as that was actually an under-pressure throw from behind. But you can see how it still works out. Next up, we have cover four. So, we'll pick cover four match. Against cover four, just streak the tight end and put the running backs on wheel routes. And that's all you got to do. And they'll just completely forget about the B route for some reason. <laughs> so, very easy play. I'm just going to save catch it. I don't know what the pressure there actually got through because they don't have a ton of blocking. But I'm going to do that one more time. Like I said, not a lot to this. They just kind of forget about the B route for some reason. Because you have five deep routes and there's only four deep zones. And then you just have a very easy uh, one-play touchdown against cover four quarters. Next up, we got the PA Scissors. Start off with Tampa 2. You can motion this guy across and put the X route on a streak. That's going to be one way to make this play happen as his B route will just get open outside here for a very easy catch and run. Won't play touchdown possibility, though I got knocked out there. But, you know, you can see how that play could work. It just didn't catch it. Or you can just put the A route on a streak and put the X route on a 10 yard out route. Motion him out if you want extra space. But this is a good option too, as the B route will just get open right over the middle. You know, it's very similar to the uh, to some other plays in this formation. Next up, we'll do cover two man. Well, the setup's gonna be the same. Is it messing everything up? So same setup. You don't have to motion that guy out. I mean, it definitely helps. But uh, you can see how you can still split those safeties. He was pretty tight coverage, but he still split the safeties. You can call that a one-play opportunity. Where you can motion this guy across, do the same thing. And you're going to see how, you know, as long as he doesn't get pressed, you got an opportunity to the outside, just like you did in cover two regular, cover two zone. Well, we'll pick that again. This time we'll pick cover zero. For cover zero, you don't really need to make any adjustments. The post route should work. The second he breaks inside, you can see that it's a very easy one play touchdown. I would say check and releasing the running back might be a good idea because it's not the best check and release, but it still works out. Next up, we'll pick cover three. So motion this guy out, put him on a comeback, street to tight end, put the full or the fullback on a wheel route, block the running back. Check and release isn't necessary. And you can see how this can get open uh, across the safety, although I was under pressure there. But it's a very similar play to other plays I've shown from this formation. Next up, we got cover four, cover four quarters. 
streak the tight end and put the running backs in wheel routes and they will forget about the B route as he's just, you know, cover four is kind of broken. Next up, we got the quick toss. Go random. Make sure you run us to the open side of the field. That's all you really got to do. Um, I think you can flip this to the short side. No, you can't, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, like I said, this is a good run. Just make sure you run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field. Toss plays are back in a pretty good way. As you can see, like they actually you know, hit their target when they pull, which is something they used to do in the past. So it's a very good play. Best against things like cover three, cover four, maybe man coverages. Uh, coverage is where the cornerbacks drop back because that's where we're going to be weakest. Next up, we got the wide receiver out. This B route is going to be any coverage other than cover two zone. As you can see, we got a man coverage there. He gets open outside of it. Uh, the only, you know, the cover three, cover four zones drop back to the point where he'll get open underneath it. So basically anything man or zone other than cover two, he should get open or at the very least the ball is not in jeopardy. He didn't catch it there because it was tight coverage. But just as long as he's not in a cover two, he's going to get outside of it. As you can see, we're getting very good consistent plays. Next up, we have the wide trail. Start off with cover two. You can motion over the tight end or you can motion this guy across. It really doesn't matter. Got a couple of good man being routes on the play too, by the way. The A route's a very good man being play. But yeah, this is pretty much it. And the X route's going to be uh, the best route to the outside here as it just shoots for that area that cover two's most vulnerable. Go ahead and we'll pick that again. This time we'll pick cover two, man. So same setup, motion across either the B route or the A route. Doesn't matter. You can probably even motion out the running back, I'm being honest, but somebody on the street on the side is all that matters. And then the X route is just like, you know, gone. He's just running right past everything. So he's got to get a nice safe catch. And you can see how we can get a one-click touchdown against that as well. 